What up, what up? Salvador Bregman here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified Podcast. On this show, we talk about Kickstarter, Indiegogo, WeFund. We talk about how to raise money successfully from the crowd. This podcast is basically designed just to help you every step of the way when it comes to raising money using crowdfunding. I got started back in 2015 with this podcast, actually launching it. We've done hundreds of episodes since then. I also got started in the industry back in 2012. And really, at the end of the day, my goal is just to deliver advice, education, resources, tools, hacks, strategies, things that work to get you funding. It is so important to me to put out this. It's almost like a public service in a way because I think there's just a dearth of information, a lack of information when it comes to this, as well as what I'm going to be talking about today, which is WeFunder and equity crowdfunding, which I think is just a, like a black hole where it's like there's just no information that's really great out there. And it's one of the things I love to do is I love to demystify things that are very complicated, kind of put it into simple, you know, no nonsense speak, no jargon or anything like that. Really just make it simple and easy to digest and make it interesting as well a little bit for you as you're discovering how crowdfunding can be applied to you, your business, your startup, your project, your creative work, et cetera. So first of all, um, go and check out some of the other episodes we got out there. We got a ton of episodes and we have so many people that we've kind of brought on to be mentors for you. This is the way that I've designed the show. I try to bring on a variety of different guests um, who can mentor you through this process by hearing about the products that they're doing, by hearing about what they're trying to do, the new initiatives, et cetera, that they have. You can find someone that you relate with. And it maybe isn't even necessarily the same product that you have. It might be a different category even. But pay attention to what's working when it comes to crowdfunding. Pay attention to the campaigns that they're doing, right? The things that they're using in order to get funding, the techniques that they're applying in order to build up a crowd, et cetera. Really go and look at the archives of this show and just go start binge listening to a bunch of these when on your way to work. Um, if you're maybe doing going into fitness, right, you're going to the gym. Uh, if you're, you know, even just cleaning your room, whatever it is, just start binge listening, start listening to this in the background. And I promise you, you're just going to pick up a tip here, pick up a tip there. And it's going to be so easy for you when you actually go out there and you launch your own campaign. The other thing I want to mention before we get into today's episode was one of the higher ups at WeFunder actually, uh, who came on the show and wanted to deliver an incredible announcement as well. And some of the things that have been working when it comes to delivering funding to the crowd and some of the stuff that you should know about regulation crowdfunding, which is kind of like investment crowdfunding, if you will. One of the things I want to mention is that not many people know about this, but I actually put out a weekly newsletter called Killer Crowdfunding Tips. And it's designed to just deliver to you straight to your inbox some of the top hacks, techniques, tools, things that are working today to get you funding. And I try to do that as well. It's kind of almost like a newsletter because it's new stuff that I'm announcing all the time. So if you want to get access to like the cutting edge when it comes to crowdfunding, you got to get on to my newsletter, Killer Crowdfunding Tips. Go to this link I'm about to mention and you can hop on that newsletter for free. Just go to crowdcrux.com slash newsletter. That link is C-R-O-W-D-C-R-U-X.com slash newsletter, crowdcrux.com slash newsletter. Go there, enter your name and email, and you'll start getting emails from me. And in addition, I've had so many of you guys starting to download my book, Equity Crowdfunding Explained. I am so thankful for that. I'm glad that it's being of service and of use to you. If you'd like to get a copy for free, Audible is doing this unique promo, and I don't know how long they're gonna be doing it. So if you definitely wanna take action on this, if you are interested in grabbing a free copy of Equity Crowdfunding Explained, all you gotta do is go to the link I'm about to mention, and you can download it there and also get a free trial of Audible. And you'll get a free copy of the equity crowdfunding explained guide. So you can go to this link, crowdcrux.com slash equity audio. That link is C-R-O-W-D-C-R-U-X.com slash equity audio, crowdcrux.com slash equity audio. You can go to that link and you can download a free copy of equity crowdfunding explained. Without further ado, let's talk to one of the higher ups when it comes to WeFunder. We're getting into that in just a second. I think you're gonna like it a lot. If you're worried about the fulfillment and shipping part of your Kickstarter campaign when it comes to getting out all those perks and rewards to your backers, rest assured I've put together a complete Kickstarter fulfillment and shipping checklist for you, and it's free. This is sponsored by the folks at FulfillRight, and they thought that you should have this checklist as part of your arsenal going into a crowdfunding campaign. If you want to get instant access to this checklist and it's free, you can go to fulfillright.com slash checklist. Again, that is F-U-L-F-I-L-L-R-I-T-E dot com slash checklist. Fulfillright.com slash checklist. Just go to that link and you can download it immediately. 
Hey guys, welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified Podcast. Hey, we're speaking with a legend when it comes to the crowdfunding industry. We're talking with Johnny Price, who is heading up a lot of different initiatives at WeFunder, which as you know, is one of the biggest equity crowdfunding websites out there. And we are lucky enough to have him on the show today and to go through some announcements, some news, and also something super cool, a new initiative that they are announcing very shortly. Johnny, welcome to the show. Thanks so much, Sal. Great to be here. Definitely, man. I'm glad you are here. All of the different mishaps that we had before scheduling this show. Happy to have you back. Man, yeah. so much has changed. So much has changed with you guys and so much has grown since our last conversation. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a really fun couple of years on the regulation crowdfunding side. As you know, about a year ago now, or a little over a year ago, March 2021, the SEC rolled out some significant improvements to the rules around, I quote, equity crowdfunding. So allowing founders to raise $5 million per year. Previously, that was just $1.07 million. We can now use a special purpose vehicle, an SPV, to roll investors up to one line on a company's cap table, which is a, a nice improvement. And mm -hmm. then it, it used to be that you had to uh, file some legal paperwork with the SEC, a Form C, before you could start fundraising. And so, you know, I might talk with a the founder, they're really interested in this. And now it's like, okay, now you've got to wait six weeks and do all this legal paperwork before you can start going. Well, now, thanks to what's called Test in the Waters, you can spin up a WeFunder page in 30 minutes and start sharing it around and generating interest. And then the kind of legal paperwork and, and financials can proceed in parallel to starting to fundraise. So the time to launch a campaign and get going has also been significantly shortened. So those are the three main improvements. And since then, yeah, the, the sector regulation crowdfunding investment volume has grown massively. We're about 4x up, but we fund a year over year, which is really exciting. So just to kind of throw out a couple of, of stats there, first of all, you know, what would you say last year was like your biggest year, right? What, what are some of the things you can throw out just so the audience knows how big this is getting, right? Either number of projects launched yeah. or amount raised, anything like that. Yeah, so we just had a record-setting month in April. We did about forty million of investment volume. Three companies actually hit five million dollars. It's the first wow. time we've, we've had three companies do five million. So, uh, Replit, Synthesis, and April all, all raised five million dollars from their customers and community and we fund our investors. Um, mm -hmm. So, forty million in April. You know, if we wind the clock back to kind of before the rule changes last year, January, February, we were probably about a quarter of that. And so, yeah, we're, we're launching about 50 companies a month now, something like that. That's insane. Um, that is so crazy. So, yeah. You know, just kind of as a question, I mean, I think you guys really stand out as well as a platform that has different kinds of values. I believe you're also a public benefit corporation. I might be wrong about That's that. Right. But, um, you know, talk a little bit about, about that. Yeah, your, your values when it comes to as a platform. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. As you say, WeFund is a, a PBC public benefit corporation. So if you go to wefund.com slash PBC, you can read our impact report and read our public benefit corporation charter. And I always kind of talk about mission being on both sides of the marketplace, right? So we have founders that are raising capital from their customers and community, uh, from the crowd, from WeFunder investors. And then on the other side, we have investors that are you know, making these investments, right? Usually equity investments. We do some debt offerings as well, but vast majority of what we do is equity. And so on the founder side, you know, what we're about as a platform is getting more capital flowing to founders throughout the country. And actually, we're going to be launching in the EU soon. So soon, you know, founders throughout the world, which is exciting for us, geographic expansion. But, you know, if we just stay focused on the US, where I'm located, I live in Nashville, Tennessee, and my team is focused in the US. You know, we just want to get more capital flow into startup founders throughout the country. And then not just in aggregate, but also if you disaggregate as well, right? So, so right now, you know, 1% of VC dollars are going to black founders. And we believe that, you know, this more democratic approach to early stage investing can get more capital flowing to, you know, more diverse founders or founders outside of Silicon Valley, mm. New York and Boston, more female founders. That's kind of on the, on the founder side. Even on our podcast, we've had on a lot of diverse founders who've also done WeFunder campaigns like W Marketplace. Those women did over a million dollars with their campaign. But I think they've really started something, more other founders connecting with them. So we've had a, a whole diverse array of people doing WeFunder campaigns as well on the podcast. Um, so yeah. I totally see that. And what's kind of interesting to me is your background, right? You know, you kind of have a, a quasi multi, you know, faceted background, uh, having worked at Kiva, also being an adjunct professor, like doing different stuff here. What continues to make you passionate, would you say, about your work at WeFunder? 
you know, the mission is definitely important, right? Getting more capital flowing to founders, underrepresented founders, like enabling everyone to participate in investing in cool startups, not just rich people. That's like on the investor side of the marketplace, what our mission's about. But, you know, for me also, like what's super motivating a WeFunder, like the team is just amazing. Like everyone on our team unanimously is like incredibly talented and fun and humble and driven and inspired by a mission. And then also just the learnings. Like I feel like the learnings over the last four years working for a company that's growing very, very quickly have mm-hmm. been, you know, very, very rich. And so generally I feel like when you're learning and progressing in your career, that's, uh, you know, very motivating. So I'd like to get into a couple of questions, first of all, when it comes to, you know, pursuing Reg CF, who is this for, et cetera. And we can talk a little bit more about, you know, some of the new new stuff that you guys have going on. So for those that are just kind of getting introduced to this, maybe they're aware of how to do traditional raise, they've done maybe a bit of other kinds of crowdfunding like Kickstarter. For Reg CF, what kind of companies do you see being successful with this? Who do you feel like is a good match for this kind of a raise? Yeah, so you need to be on WeFunder. The minimum is 50k, and the maximum is five million. So if you're raising between 50k and five million, then you can be a good fit. You know, B2C is slightly more in the sweet spot, I would say, or companies with a large audience of customers, because then you can go to those customers and get them to invest in you. But you know, we've also had many, you know, B2B SaaS biotech companies. You know, kind of companies that you wouldn't say are kind of super sexy or kind of necessarily like in the sweet spot for crowdfunding that have raised millions of dollars in WeFunder. So, but B2C slightly more in the sweet spot. And yeah, for me, it's like, do you have a company that people want to invest in? You know, and if you do, then you're going to do well on WeFunder. If you don't, it's going to be harder for you to raise on WeFunder. And we allow companies to raise more than they could if they were going the conventional path um, mm. because now you can publicly promote the offering. Now you can raise from unaccredited investors as well as accredited investors. Now you can get in front of WeFunder's uh, millions from registered user base. But at the end of the day, like if you don't have a company that people want to invest in, like you know whether you're pitching accredited investors or you know, friends and family and connections with customers, you're going to mm-hmm. struggle. So that's how I think about it. Okay. And when it comes to that as well, I mean, you guys have a marketplace, like you said, and I've been speaking with more and more companies who are saying you guys also are bringing in, you know, investment dollars and you're getting attention to people. Um, how do you help or support founders? Is it just kind of based on an algorithm? Is it based on what's kind of blowing up? Do you do any kind of ad work or anything like that? Like, how do you guys help founders as they're launching and growing on your platform? Yeah, we, you know, explore page algorithm prioritizes or ranks companies by a bunch of factors, but like their velocity of fundraising is one of the key factors. So you're going to get more exposure if you're getting kind of more pickup, right? We do send marketing emails, you know, that that shine an additional spotlight on folks outside of the website. We actually also run Facebook ads for companies while we're mostly retargeting existing WeFunder investors with Facebook ads. So we do a bunch of stuff to try to help promote and market the race according to kind of basically objective criteria. So when companies pass a certain milestone, then that kicks off this marketing tactic or that marketing tactic. The Mm. thing that I try to set expectations for founders around is like the average or the expected breakdown between first time investment investors on WeFunder, which is people that you bring from your own marketing and your own outreach and your own pitching investors, and then people that WeFunder brings, i.e. existing WeFunder investors making a second, third, fourth, 104th investment on the platform. And the breakdown on average is about two thirds, one third. So two thirds coming from first time investors, one third coming from repeat investors. So that's kind of the average, you know, sometimes you get companies where all of the money is coming from their own network. Sometimes they pull a higher percentage from WeFunders existing investor space, like Y Combinator companies mm-hmm. historically have raised 70% from existing investors and only 30% from new investors. So that ratio is kind of flipped. Uh, mm-hmm. But generally on average, it's like two thirds from people you bring, one third from people we bring. When it comes to that as well, you know, we'll see different campaigns that are out there. And I'm just going to be honest, like some some of the marketing materials um, for the campaigns, like a, a video, for example, might be very basic compared to more of like a Kickstarter Indiegogo campaign. And yet these campaigns right. are raising millions of dollars, right? Why do you feel like that is? Do you feel like it's really about the relationships that the founder has built up? Do you feel like it's about the opportunity? What do you feel like really makes someone pull the trigger on one of these Reg CF style investments? Yeah, it's a good question. I, I do think it's probably a little more kind of multifaceted or, or complex on, on WeFunder versus a Kickstarter. So I think a Kickstarter is like beautiful products, like great brand, like, you know, video that's kind of very front and center. On WeFunder, you know, that stuff is definitely important as well. But like, so is 
you know, does this founder have like 10 years of experience working in this sector, you know, or like, did, mm. is this founder like just coming from Tesla or Amazon or, you know, Stanford Business School or whatever, whatever it is, you know, and also then like, what does the growth chart look like? So if you have a really basic video, but like you have a hockey stick growth chart, that's like 50% month over month growth for the last 12 months, then like, doesn't matter. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's like what you're going to put front and center. And like, I would have the video, just like have a video of that shot, like dancing around on the screen. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, I, I feel you. I mean, you think about it as well, a lot of the big companies, I mean, it's really about how, how well the company is doing. Right. I mean, even like companies like Goldman Sachs, you look at their Instagram and it kind of sucks. Right. But they're obviously right, a lot of exactly. Companies. Totally. Yeah. So it seems like it matters a bunch of different variables kind of going there. One of the other common questions I've been getting when it comes to Reg CF is around valuations and mm -hmm. how you either help or you don't help or what your thought process is. Like a founder is like, I really want to do one of these, but I have no idea how to value my company. What are your yeah. typical responses to that? Yeah, we can certainly kind of provide some guidance and kind of you know work work with founders on trying to you know baseline and benchmark against comps in the industry for that stage. Generally speaking, though, we fund is not investing in these companies, right? With a platform that they're raising on, it's the investors that are investing that they want to be pitching and convincing that their valuation is right or they should be raising on a safe versus a convertible note versus a price round versus a rev share. And you know, because we fund is not investing, ultimately our opinion doesn't really matter. You know, um, mm. we might say, yeah, 10 million, 10 million valuation cap on the safe. Sounds great to me. But like if the founder can't persuade investors that it's worth that much, then like who cares what we fund their things? So we have this feature called lead investors where um, there's a lead investor. Typically, they're putting in 5% of the round. So let's say you're raising a million on WeFunder, maybe the lead investor puts in 50K. And then that lead investor is part of their role is like helping to negotiate with the founder. And it's like, okay, if there's an angel investor that knows what they're doing, that's putting in 50K, you know, on certain terms, then okay, their opinion actually matters. And so then let's take the valuation cap on the safe that they negotiate with the founder and then put it up on WeFunder. Mm. Um, but for me, it's like... Because they're investing on the same terms as everyone else, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. There's the conversations between founders and investors that are actually going to be writing checks into the company. Those are the opinions that matter when it comes to terms and valuation. Yeah, and I would think too, if, you know, if you're someone who's just coming across a new company and you already see that this person believes in that company and they're investing at these terms and um, this is the valuation, you're far more likely to believe that right, than some third person. Exactly. Who's kind of getting in the middle of that process? Yeah, I, I hear from founders all the time, like, oh, this accountant like did a discounted cash flow model and told me that my valuation was 30 million. It's like, is the accountant investing fifty thousand dollars on that thirty million valuation? Because if not, mm. like, I don't really care what their Excel model says, you know. Awesome, awesome. So I just have like one or two more rapid fire questions, and I have a question yeah, on for... more of a story front. But uh, so one of the other rapid fire was for people that are looking to do a raise. Does it really matter what? type of business do you have, whether it's C Corp or S Corp or LLC? Do you encourage anything when it comes to that? Or do you, what are your thoughts on that question? We can't do S Corps on WeFunder. We can only do C Corps or LLC. So if it's a C Corp or LLC, let's talk. If not, we can't accommodate it, unfortunately. Okay. And one other final rapid fire is for those that are interested in exploring this, do you recommend them really getting like an attorney and a CPA on their side? Do you feel like you're at the point where you have a lot of templates now to help them? Where do you feel like you are with, with that kind of stage? Yeah. So on the legal contract side, we have some standard templates. So we have a standard safe agreement. We use the Y Combinator standard post money safe template. Uh, we have a Cooley convertible that's super solid. And so if you're using a safe or a convertible note, like a simpler contract like that, generally we'd recommend using our contracts. You can, of course, work with your own lawyer. If you're wanting to do a price round, then you would want a custom subscription agreement, custom contract. And then on the accountant side, like, yeah, we generally we can make recommendations to CPAs who are quick and good and cheap. What I would say, though, is like, if you're considering this, like first talk to the WeFunder team, because you know, like we can guide you on, okay, when are you going to need to work with a lawyer? Because it may be never, you know, when are you going to need to engage with a CPA and accountant? Because it's like, like I was saying, with tests and orders, you can now start fundraising in 30 minutes. And maybe you use that kind of test and orders phase to gauge investor interest. And maybe there isn't that much investor interest yet because you haven't made enough traction. And so when you're pitching investors, they're saying, yeah, come back to me in six months when you've got more traction. So then mm -hmm. like, if you'd engaged a CPA at the outset, you would have wasted your time and money. 
because like, oh, it turns out like we didn't have investor demand yet. So now you can kind of gauge investor demand, try to make progress on the race. And then if it's going well, and so that if you need to engage a CPA, but you only need a CPA review on your financials if you're raising more than 250K. So you can get to 200K, then you don't need to engage a CPA. And so you kind of can make that decision on when to engage with a CPA based on the progress you're making on the fundraising, as opposed to having to make the CPA call up front. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, it's a very smart way to do it and kind of de-risk the the process, right? At the same exactly. time. Exactly. De-risk it, like MVP, like spend less money up front and then just kind of decide if and when to spend that money with So so one other thing here, you know, for me, seeing these different companies is so freaking inspiring, man. And I think that's really what captivates my attention is when I'm seeing the founders get involved, they're starting to answer questions, they're getting tons of questions coming in, they're doing updates, you can see how excited they are, right? And also hear them come on the show and they're talking about how this is something that they've been dreaming of and putting in so many hours to get this company off the ground. And now they have an audience, now they have the funding. It's, it's so freaking inspiring. Do you have any stories that come to your mind when it comes to either companies that um, you really admire that have gone through WeFunder or that you really like or any stories you want to share with the audience when it comes to that? Yeah. One of my favorite stories is this guy, Wes Wearson. He's the founder of Valia Labs. This is a you know Y Combinator backed um, startup that's trying to cure cancer in dogs. And so Wes um, went through YC and, you know, he, I think he's like, you know, talks about this publicly, like he was pitching at Demo Day and, you know, there's a lot of science risk ahead of him. It's like pretty early for like VCs in the biotech space. And so, you know, it was just some of the fundraising conversations were going more slowly. And so then he came to WeFunder and raised, I can't remember, I think it was like a half a million WeFunder. And, you know, he talks about like that money, like basically helped him keep going. And since then he's raised like NSF grants, National Science Foundation grants and like other grant funding. And he's, he's like really like going well now. But that was like at a very kind of vulnerable, fragile time in the company. I think that money came in, you know, beautifully. And that, by the way, is an example, right? It's, he wasn't a consumer-facing company. He didn't have an audience. He still managed mm-hmm. to raise, raise half a million. That YC brand on your resume de- definitely uh, says a lot. But probably the, the coolest thing, even apart from the money, and this is the best thing for me about WeFunder, is that there's this tab called what people say on every page. And, you know, if you read through that, that's like comments that investors are making when they invest in a company. And so many of the investors on Wes's campaign were saying, like, my dog died of cancer. If I can be a part of a solution here, like, that's really awesome and inspiring. That's awesome. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, that kind of like community and that kind of passion that investors have for the mission, sure, hopefully they make money on this. If he succeeds and builds a company that cures cancer in dogs, he's going to make a lot of money. But like, it's more than that. We talk about invest in startups you love on WeFunder as opposed to invest in startups that are going to make you a ton of money. That's what our brand and mission is all about. And, and that word community, right? That really, I think, lends into your values and kind of the way that you're trying to change right. the world to a small degree. And that also is part of this new initiative that I understand that you're, you're working on as well. Maybe you can kind of get into that a little bit. Yeah, so I think this is one of the reasons why April was, you know, the, the biggest month we've ever had by a distance. Like we launched this communityround.com website in mid-April and, and we're trying to launch and popularize this community round concept. And so our CEO doesn't like the term equity crowdfunding. It's a little kind of cumbersome. And so what we're trying to kind of reposition that as is a community round. You run a friends and family round, you raise from your friends and family, you run angel round, you raise from angels. You run a community around, you raise from your community, your customers, people that are passionate about what you're building. Like Wes, he was raising from a community of people that, you know, wanted to try to cure cancer in dogs. And so communityround.com just like gives a bunch of examples of, you know, companies that are using WeFunder, not even to raise money. I mean, sure, like it's an easier way to, to raise capital for your startup. But like some of the companies on there, Mercury Bank, Repla, Levels, Synthesis, like these are all like very well uh, funded companies, venture backed, like on the startup, you know, hockey stick, rocket ship path. Like they don't need the money. They're not doing this because, you know, they are struggling to raise from VCs or real investors. They're doing this because as well as raising a 120 million Series B from K2 and Andreessen Horowitz, Imad from Mercury thought it would be really cool to open it up to let his customers invest in the company because 
that would delight his customers. And generally, as a founder, you want to be in the business of delighting your customers. You know, well, that mm. would build stronger ties among his community. And generally, every founder wants to be building stronger connections among the community that they're trying to build as they grow their startup. And so we see more and more examples now of founders that are choosing to run community rounds, again, not because they need the money, but just because they think this is going to accelerate their growth and build stronger ties among their community. Yeah, I mean, that, that concept of just ownership as well, of being a part of something totally. that you own, it really stands out, I think. And it also makes you feel That's almost great. like a, yeah, it, it also makes you feel as though like you're kind of tasked with curating this experience or telling about yeah. this experience in some way. And I think it can be really powerful in that way from a marketing standpoint, but also when you get your loyal totally. customers around that, it really, I think, has a very powerful effect in general. Right? Yeah, I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but yeah, you run a community around, like as well as VCs add a lot of value, right? Raise money from VCs, raise money from conventional an angels. WeFund is not like opposed or antagonistic towards like conventional investors. But you know what? Like if you're raising a Series B as well as raising from three awesome VCs, instead of raising from a fourth VC, there's diminishing returns there. Allocate a small percentage to your customers. Recruit this like super passionate army of brand ambassadors. Like we would argue, there's there's more benefit and upside in that than the diminishing returns from getting that that check from the fourth VC that looks a lot like the third VC. And for this, would you say that these are people then that are already have a company that they're raising you know investment capital for? Or they've already done a round or two, and now they're kind of opening up this community round, or is it also for people that are just kind of doing their first raise? Yeah, for me, like we fund there and, you know, when we talk about a community round, it can be all stages. So for sure, like Series A, Series B, if you have a huge audience, like Mercury Bank sent one email and raised $5 million in five hours because wow. they had a, a super passionate, like customer base of 40,000 startup founders that were super stoked to invest in them, right? Replit had 10 million users. And so they sent one email, raised $5 million in, in half a day, Right. So if you have, you know, a million customers, like this is push button, get money. This is, you know, very, very easy to raise money. And so it, it, it's awesome and, and super fun. Uh, we fund as uh, investment Slack channel when, when these companies launch. But also like, and this is part of our mission and a big part of why I work at WeFunder, like we want to be helping the coffee shop raise a hundred grand, you know, mm. and we want to be the first friends and family money in. I always say, look, if you're running a friends and family rounds, like, why on earth would you not do that on WeFunder? We can yeah. all invest this to one line on the cap table. We can help you promote it in a legally compliant way. We can let you raise from unaccredited investors, et cetera. And so it's like, yeah, for me, this is from the first money into the company all the way through to Series B, C. You know, we want to be kind of working with founders every stage, every step of the way. Very cool, very cool. So, so when it comes to this, you know, just a couple more questions on like the functionality as well. So, do you guys do any kind of work with NFTs or anything like that? I've seen a couple of people who have offered that on your platform. What are your thoughts on that concept? Yeah, so in terms of like kind of the focus of the investment being an NFT, that's not really our, our, our focus. And, and there's other much better platforms than us for that. The, a couple of exceptions. One is if it was an NFT company that's like raising equity to, to grow their NFT company, then of course, like, you know, they might raise their equity capital from VCs. And we would argue they should allocate some part of that equity capital to raise a we funder. And then I've also seen a couple of companies that's like, okay, if you invest two and a half K as a perk, we'll give you this NFT, right? Yeah, so that, yeah. that's been another use case that you might be referring to. But in terms of like the thing that they are raising money for being exclusively the NFT, that's that's not, we haven't Got seen it. that on WeFunder and it's not really a focus for us. Okay. And, and as a follow-up, I think one of the things we've seen as well, kind of with the equity crowdfunding niche, you know, this idea of a secondary marketplace, right? And Start Engine also mm -hmm. incorporating that. What are your thoughts on that? And also, do you have any thoughts on sort of your benefits over other, you know, platforms that are out there for those that are considering it? Yeah, for sure. We definitely see the secondary market as being in the future. Right? Just like on Robinhood, you can buy and sell shares in public companies. So we think like there should be more liquidity, uh, the ability to buy and sell shares in private companies. Um, so it's not just like locked up for 10 years. It's a little complicated, right? Like the last thing you want to do is kind of be incentivizing private early stage CEOs to be kind of nervously looking at their kind of day-to-day -day stock price as, as is kind of mm. happening with public companies. So I think we need to build the secondary market in, in, a, in a kind of smart and, and kind of strategic, thoughtful way. You know, yeah, Start Engine, which is one of our, they're actually our biggest competitor. We, you know, we fund the Start Engine Republic at the top, top three companies in space. 
I think, you know, so far a year today, we're about 43% market share. I think Start Engines, maybe kind of 27%, Republic's like 17%, something like that. But, uh, you know, Start Engine have, have built a secondary market already, you know, not meaning to kind of cast cast too many through too many stones like i look at that and it's like the the reason we haven't built the secondary market yet is that we don't see there being that much liquidity at this stage so if you look at some of the companies on the start engine secondary is like not much going on there and so Mm -hmm. for us that's going to be a pretty pretty significant like product build we're going to really dedicate resources to that extremely well and so we basically kind of want to do that when there's kind of you want to do it right yeah when you have the right resources and plans it sounds like yeah got it awesome Um, man yeah, I and mean, then that, yeah, to, to, to mm-hmm. your other question on the kind of the the why we fund the you know market share, like I say, we're number one, which which we're the cheapest platform. I would argue our product is the best. So the the way we've structured investments with the SPV, I think our checkout flow is super smooth. Account creation checkout flow and quality of companies in the portfolio, like the the replets and the Mercury banks and the levels and the synthesis of this world, you know, I would argue the quality of our portfolio is stronger and you, you kind of want to have your startup be, be alongside the best companies. So mm-hmm. um, those are some of the, some of the things that I would point to, but yeah, you should definitely do your diligence and, you know, talk to the team at WeFunder and the team at Republic and, you know, compare and contrast. Like it's also, it's a relationship, right? So it's kind of like, yeah. who do you vibe with? And this is going to be a multi-month, maybe even multi-year relationship. So definitely worth working with people that you have super strong rapport. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's something also that just really surprised me is the number of companies that are doing multiple rounds, right? And in some cases, oh, yeah, trying sure. out different platforms in that way, which is incredible. And, you know, the fact that you can keep coming back to the crowd once you establish that, I think is really profound because you're cutting out the middleman, right, in that way as well. Totally. Yeah, that's a dream for us. But And again, it's not like the whole round every time is the crowd, but it's like, in maybe friends and family, it's only WeFunder, but then when it comes to pre seed, seed, series A, maybe each of those rounds, 20% allocated to your customers and community, 80% from conventional VCs and angels, but then every round, repeat rounds, uh, mm-hmm. we're there, like allocating a part of every round from a startup to their community. So let's go through a couple of takeaways, right, when it comes to the audience. So, you know, for those who are just kind of getting started, where do you feel like they should go to learn more about? WeFunder and some of the the things that you're doing here. Yeah, so if you're a startup founder, you want to want to learn more. WeFunder.com slash raise is the best place um, to go. And then, yeah, if you're an investor or a wannabe investor, and you can be in, anyone listening can be an investor and sell some WeFunder now. The minimum is a hundred bucks. It's very easy to you know just as you would open an account with Robinhood and invest in a public company, now you can invest in a cool startup for a hundred bucks. And so wefunder.com, you can browse around startups on there. But yeah, for founders to get more info, wefunder.com slash raise. And if you want more detailed info, then FAQs are really, really good, have some great information. And then, you know, if you want more information than that, feel free to reach out and we'd love to uh, chat with you. And this community round concept. So I see there's a like a petition, a startup button. So where should they go to learn more about this community round? And maybe you can just explain that a tiny bit. Yeah, so communityround.com is is the landing page that we set up to just introduce this community around concept. So and the petitions feature is kind of cool. So, you know, we wanted to have a kind of it's kind of like a growth hack, but it's like if you go to communityround.com slash SpaceX. Then this is a petition where I think a few hundred people now are petitioning Elon to say, "Hey, let us invest in SpaceX." And you know, he may never like notice, or you know, he may never. Even if he notices, he may say, "Actually, no." But you know, the hope is if we have thousands, thousands of people say, "Hey, Elon, let us invest in SpaceX," maybe he says yes, and then maybe he opens That's up. That's such a cool idea. Yeah. yeah so yeah. any startup you want to invest in. The idea is go to communityaround.com, sign the petition if one exists already or create one if it doesn't and just basically try to get on the radar screen of the founder of a company you think is really cool and has a lot of potential and let's see if we can encourage them to let their, let their fans invest in them. Yeah, I mean, I think that'd be incredible. And also just seeing some of the companies here that are listed, it's really exciting or like the boring company, right? That'd be really cool to become yeah, an investor. Yeah, yeah. In that well thank you so much for, for coming on the show and uh, you know i really appreciate you sharing all of these tips and advice i guess my final question for you is you know 
you, you've seen so many different founders at this point in your career and you've seen what works. You've seen the commonalities of successful campaigns and you know founders who are now millionaires and growing companies. If you could leave um, one word or one message to the audience, people who are in that early stage, it could be a word of encouragement. It could be a tip. It could be a quote. It could be something you think they should focus on. What would you leave with them? And we can end the episode on that note. Yeah, I love that. So many different directions I could go. I think one thing that I've noticed with WeFunders founders, and I think it's hopefully a word of encouragement, is around kind of resilience and grit and tenacity. And so, you know, WeFunders founders started the company in 2012. I didn't join until 2018, but Nick and Greg have been working away at this for, for over 10 years now. And, uh, you know, there were times in that decade where things looked really dark. <laughs> and bleak. I remember one time at WeFunder, even in 2019, where we were the people that stayed that were taking pay cuts and runway was super short and there was no growth and, you know, it looked really bleak. And then, you know, a couple of years later, the SEC rolls out these regulatory improvements and now we're exploding. And so I guess, yeah, the, the point is like, you know, stick at it, have that tenacity and resilience and grit. And, you know, oftentimes like it, it there's a cliche, right? Of 10 years to be an overnight success. But like, if you have that um, resiliency and make it through, then when the growth hits, like you've learned so much and you've kind of been through that idea maze and you're kind of well positioned to, to capitalize on it. So, you know, stick out, have that grit. Um, and uh, yeah, at WeFunder, we've definitely been through it um, and come out the other side and things are looking really exciting right now. So hopefully that's encouraging for some of the founders uh, who are listening. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the show and can't wait to have you back. Cheers, Sal. This was fun. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Crowdfunding Demystified Podcast. My name is Salvador Bergman. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the podcast. If you have not yet, please give me a rating and review on iTunes, hopefully a positive one. Go and check out my YouTube channel by my same name. You can also search me up on Instagram if you'd like to under the same name. Um, it would mean so much to me as well. If you go and just to start to look at some of the other episodes that we got out there, man, we got hundreds. Just start binge listening to this, you know, really invest in your education, invest in your learning, just kind of look this play even on a loop right behind the scenes while you're doing other stuff and you'll just pick up a tip here you'll pick up some advice here you pick up a tool here and i can tell you this is one of the best ways you wish you can spend your time leading up to the launch of any kind of crowdfunding campaign whether it's a kickstarter indiegogo we funder etc um, if you have been hearing about this new kind of regulation crowdfunding thing you want to raise investment capital from a bunch of people um, and typically people are investing around 500 dollars to a thousand dollars a pop and this is really something that you want to do you want to put yourself out there to the world and raise capital in this way. I tell you, man, you got to, you got to follow some of the stuff that I talk about when it comes to the step-by-step -step plan to actually launch and to do an equity crowdfunding campaign. So first of all, go and check out my book, Equity Crowdfunding Explained at crowdcrux.com slash equity audio. That link will take you to Audible where they are running a promo where you can actually get a free copy of this book on Audible at crowdcrux.com slash equity equity audio. So go to that link if you want to get some more information, education about equity crowdfunding. But in addition, if you're kind of ready to, you know, really consider this seriously for your company, for your startup, for what you're trying to do, you can always book a one on one coaching call with me. This is an intensive coaching call. We're going to get homework items, action items, a strategy, a plan, etc. As well as talk about whether or not this is something that I, even I could maybe uh, lay in a hand with it to a degree. So I don't work with a lot of different clients. And there's a very strict, rigorous process when it comes to that just because I get inbounded by so many people, right? There's so much inflow, but for some people I will work with them. So there's no promises obviously, but if it's something that you really think would be a good investment for you, I'm telling you that majority of campaigns that I've worked with have said after this call that it was golden, right? That they learned so much, got introduced to so many more resources that it really sped up the entire launch process. And one of the things you might not even be aware of is just the expenses that go into a campaign and how I've saved people thousands and thousands of dollars, as well as made them tens and tens of thousands of dollars. So one individual coaching call can literally be the best investment that you make when it comes to doing a crowdfunding campaign. Go to this link I'm about to mention at crowdcrux.com slash coaching. That link is C-R-O-W-D-C-R-U-X.com slash coaching. Crowdcrux.com slash coaching will take you there and you can book a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me. Thank you so much and I will see you next time.